Got her to it, last, sir. After the government Labour master and the officers had all had their pick. His honour will be pleased with this one. Like a bullock. Plenty of work and no trouble in him. But the other... He got a life sentence for being a rubble rouser in Ireland. Their names, Mr. Evans. He says his name's Donald. They lost his papers, but no matter. He's here for good. That one's Finn. Matthew Finn. Keep a civil tongue in your head, Boyle! Will you be long on his honest business, sir? I'll be about an hour or two. Then I'll lock them in the jail and meet you outside the tavern. I have a thirst and make a drink the harbour dry. I'll meet you at noon, Mr. Evans, outside the store. You mean we sent wheat to Sydney, Mr. Harvey, for these prices? The prices are fixed, sir. Arranged. I mean, rather than return with full wagons. You sold at the commissary's pleasure. Military prices dictated by the officers. I'd sooner have thrown the entire consignment into the harbour. That, if I may say so, sir, is your privilege, not mine. <clears throat> oh. We will hope the new governor proves more able to rule than the old, hmm? What are you studying today, Patrick? Poetry, Father. May we hear you recite? Uh, without benefit of the book. Where you walk, cool gales shall fan the glade. Trees, where you sit, shall crowd into the shade. Where you tread, blushing flowers shall rise. And all things flourish where you turn your eyes. You satisfied with his progress, Mr. Harvey? Yes, sir. Then pray continue. And don't neglect, Mr. Harvey, mathematics and the classics. You must be taught that life is not all Lyrical poetry. He's in a bad mood today. Now, Patrick. Well, he is. Would you like my new stepmother? Uh, Mrs. Mannion's a fine woman. I mean, do you like her? You often look at her. Patrick, that's enough. Sorry, Mark. I think we'll return to English literature. Kindly turn to page 20. Get off. If he catches you... Jim. Too busy. With his lady. I told you. I'll wait. I must insist, Connor, that you do not walk or ride abroad unattended. But, Stephen... This is a penal colony, my love. Criminals. No woman is safe. I did hope that you would bring a suitable companion with you. Your, uh, Aunt Bertha, perhaps. Save me, sir, for my Aunt Bertha. She's a dear soul and she's totally deaf. Who would you have me walk with? You're forever occupied with business. Patrick's at his studies. Who else is there? It's only that I'm concerned for you. Mr. Harvey, I find him strangely tongue-tied. Ellen, I find rather cold. Ellen has not been uncivil, I hope. Civility can be rather wearisome. It's all I get from her. There's never a smile, never a word out of place. That says it should be. She knows her status. And what, dear Stephen, is mine? <laughs> You are the mistress of the finest house in the colony. Indeed I am. Perhaps I'll have a rose garden. Where? Here. With flagstones and a rockery and even a fountain. Yes, have it you shall. The finest garden. Draw up the plans, my love, and I shall see that they're implemented. Thank you, Stephen. I'll speak to Evans about it. He'll start whenever you're ready. How long have you been here? Eight years. Since this place was tense and high grass. For what? Poaching. <laughs> You're a terrible man, Lynch. That's an awful wicked crime. What's yours? I'm talking too much. <laughs> talking of freedom. How men weren't meant to be chained and harnessed for the gentlest profits. And their rose gardens. Come on! Get home with it, there. Freedom, eh? You'll learn, Finn. 
There ain't no freedom here. There wasn't any of the American colonies. So they'd had enough of Fat George and his red coats. And a man called Jefferson said, all men are created equal. Equal? Equal. That's a laugh. It worked. The government by the people, for the people. That's us. Us? We're not the government. But we're the majority. It's all here, written in words of blood. Thomas Paine, the rights of man. For Christ's sake, put it away. I don't need to read it to know what's in it. Move that cat up. What are you doing down there? Get your bags into it. What do you think you're doing, you worthless, idle, lazy scum? You like a lot of old women? ye that love mankind, he that dare oppose not only the tyrant but the tyranny, stand forth. The earth is overrun by oppression, and freedom hath been haunted round the globe. Shut up, you fool, you mad. You, come on! What do you think you're doing? Get it up the hill! Jesus! You bastards! You lazy, stupid, get my dirty bastard! Look what you've done! It's a fine day, ma'am. Indeed it is, Mr. Harvey. Oh, sometimes I long for soft Irish rain. And you? Do you not miss your native land? Oh, well, yes. Forgive me. I know you've correspondence to attend to for my husband. may bring Captain and Mrs. Abbott back from Toon Gabby to dine with us. Yes, ma'am. I thought I should warn you. He told me. I'm prepared, ma'am. How long have you worked for Mr. Mannion? Since Sydney Town, when Master Patrick was little. You, you had a child yourself, I believe. He's dead, ma'am. Drowned long since. I am sorry. Get up, you worthless bug, stinking hiding uh, scum! You get up! Mr. Evans! Uh, Good morning to you, ma'am. What are you doing? This man seems injured. Oh, faking, ma'am, begging your pardon. I think not. And the stones are far too heavy. What's happened to the cart? Broken, ma'am, see? And him because of it. And he has a go to claim it ran over his leg, ma'am. Stop it, Mr. Evans. Fetch two men and carry him to his quarters. Ma'am? Fetch them. The master won't like it, ma'am. The master is away, and you'll take your orders from me. Now go. Does it hurt much? Enough. I'm sorry that my rose garden... Oh, faith, you'll get your rose garden. Don't trouble yourself. That wasn't what I meant. You're from Ireland? County Wicklow, ma'am. Indeed, I know it. What's your name? Matthew Finn. I... I hope the leg is not broken. 
I'm most distressed. Distressed, is it? Keep your distress for the mud on your shoes and your gown. How dare you speak to me like that? Dare? When a man's low in misery, he'll dare anything. You choose to be insolent. Is it a flogging deed, Audi, my lady? Would that please you? I would not wish for you to be punished. Would you not? I was concerned for you. For the likes of me concerns a rare commodity. Almost as rare as freedom. Ma'am? Has he been a trouble to you, ma'am? Not in the least, Mr. Evans. Please, take him to the hut and treat him gently. A consignment of 50 hogs, two brood mares, a crate of geese, together with the wheat seed as previously ordered. Uh, yours, etc. <coughs> My dear. Stephen, I wonder if you could tell me, how is he? He? Who is he? The convict, Matthew Finn, the man whose leg was injured. Evans tells me he should be fit to work in a day or two. Now, have no fear. Your garden will proceed. I no longer want the garden. What? I don't want it. I should take no pleasure in it. And I am anxious to know that he... that the convict, Finn, is receiving proper attention. Mr. Harvey, you may leave us. I have to say, I'm astonished at this intrusion into matters which do not concern you. It is my understanding of marriage that my husband's concerns are mine. I only ask if the man's injuries have been attended to. You show a most inappropriate sympathy for him, Connor. He is a felon, sent here for inciting rebellion. Would you have riots and treason flourish here? Answer me, if you please. Uh, of course not. Then but... cease this personal interest in a man who would encourage it if he had the chance. <laughs> You're young, Connor. Your heart seems to govern your judgment. <laughs> Believe me, since our prosperity depends upon labor, I would hardly neglect injuries which leave a man idle. So let's have done with the matter. And now I have a pleasant surprise for you. A party. His Excellency and Mrs. King request the pleasure of the company of Mr. and Mrs. Stephen Manny at a garden party to celebrate the 13th year of the foundation of the colony. In fact, it is to celebrate Hunter's departure at long last. Governor King intends to stand no nonsense from the New South Wales Corps. He said so. It will be there, Stephen. Everyone who's anyone, my love. Regrets, apologies. Previous engagements, how dare they? Oh, you do not upset yourself, King. Your gout... Oh, damn my gout! Damn these military upsides and their impudence. We must join our guests. Such guests who have deigned to join us. Four of those we invited. And who's behind it? MacArthur, that's who! Plots and schemes against my every order. Come in. Ma'am, Your Excellency, you chose to attend, sir. Naturally, since you chose to invite me. Mrs. MacArthur is shortly expecting our fifth child, ma'am, and begs to be excused. But she sends you her most sincere greetings. Sheep, Mannion. Wool. What else can be produced with so little labour and expense? Wool, sir. That is the only future for this colony. Your servant, ma'am. Captain MacArthur. Confounded fellow. Look at him. Blessed peacock. Now, King, you promised not to lose your temper. He's quarrelled with Marshal and Captain Abbott. Insulted Colonel Patterson. And the temerity to challenge him to a duel. You forbid it. I have forbidden it. Attend to your guests. No stomach for this party. His Excellency appears more gloomy than usual. I think his gout affects his humour. I understand it's a source of some discomfort. And how is your almost grown-up stepson, ma'am? Patrick. Well, thank you, Captain. Uh, we're sending him back to England shortly to complete his education. Not Ireland? Not with the news one hears of unrest and rebellion. <laughs> or you may scoff, sir. But I also fear for this colony when insurrectionists whose only ambition is revolt are transported here. We can deal with that. 
Forgive me, ma'am. I must away. I have an early and pressing engagement tomorrow. An assignation, sir. An affair of honour, ma'am. Perhaps, Mannion, you will oblige me by acting as a witness. Ten paces, gentlemen, and on my signal. Page. But, sir, this is a warrant for the arrest of Captain MacArthur, Mr. Page. You may go and arrange it. Sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Harvey. Will you solve a riddle for me? Uh, if I can, ma'am. Why do they call Captain John MacArthur Jack Bodice? Well, ma'am. Um, uh, as I understand it, it's just hearsay, of course. Oh, I won't hold it against you. He, uh, he has rather an aristocratic manner, but well, rumour has it he was once apprenticed to a maker of ladies' stays. Oh. <laughs> a jest, my dear. Oh, a, a riddle, Stephen, which Mr Harvey has solved for me. Oh. And may one inquire the nature of it? The uh, <clears throat> origins of Captain MacArthur, sir. Origins? Uh, his uh, foundations, one might say. Hey, Mr. Harvey. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Do you stock up on grog next time we take the Granger town? Don't you ever get sick of this place? Often. Times I'd give an arm for the sight of a sluggy or a Welsh valley. You'll never see that no more. None of us will ever go home. We're stuck for the rest of our lives in this godforsaken hole. I know what's bothering you, boy -o. Have a drop. Warm your gut. Get some sleep. Bloody fool. Haunted round the globe. It's like a fire you can't put out. And they'll never put it out. What can we do? Five of us. We're not five, we're a hundred. A thousand. And there'll never be enough chain when the day comes to keep us down. Could it ever be? No. He's a crazy man. Crazy, am I? There was what Tyler who led the peasants and took Canterbury. That's right. I heard of him. A leader with spirit and a dream. It's all we lack. Oh, go to sleep. 
Hide that book, or you will learn. They'd sooner give you a rope than feed you. <laughs> You ever think of them up there? Mannion and her? Sometimes. Hate her? Do you? No. She's rich and young. I'm handsome too. In her shoes. I know where they pinch. They're waiting. I just wanted to ride down to the river. One last time. I miss you. Will you, ma'am? Yes, I will. And when you come home again, you can learn to call me Connor. Patrick! I'll take him, you go. Patrick! And Patrick, I'll write to tell you whether you have a brother or a sister. Truly? I didn't know. No one does. You're the first. I... I, I, I hope it's a girl, and she looks like you. Tell you, I cannot trust the court-martial of these brother officers. I will not have him acquitted. My love, please do not distress yourself. Arthur has done everything, everything to create discord between myself and the corps. He provoked a duel with his commanding officer. Do you realize he came here 500 pounds in debt and is now worth at least 20,000? I entreat you to cease fretting and come to bed. You'll get your death of cold pacing about like this. Fiddlesticks, madam. Sir! I shall send him to England for trial. Pray God he never returns. Good. Now come to bed, King, and stop this. To write the undersecretary that if MacArthur ever should return, it may as well be as governor. One half the colony already belongs to him. Won't be long before he gets the other half. Good night. Good night, my love. Now, you just make yourself comfortable. I think we've brought everything. You're sure you don't want me to sit with you, my dear? I know you've business to attend, Stephen. Uh, perhaps Mr. Harvey or Ellen? Thank you, no. Please don't fuss. But I wish to fuss. It's what I've dreamed of and prayed for. You're certain you're not too hot or too cold? Stephen! Uh, Mrs. Blake will arrive next week to attend to your every need. She, she's an excellent nurse. It's good as it'll ever be. Good enough to work on, ma'am. Please, uh, stay a moment. I was told you were a gardener once. Amongst other things. Oh, what other things? Thatcher, grave digger. Anything to bring me in a crust, ma'am. 
Do you like flowers, Finn? I can see a colour and smell a scent just like any other man. It was a simple question. Aye. Simple. But I'm not. A man is in chains and he's asked foolishness. Does he like the sunrise or the smell of the mountains? Can he read a book? Finn. If it's insolence to talk of such things, and I dare say it is, call the master. I, I have no intention of... You look at me as if you despise me. How could I despise you? Or hate me. Should I love you, ma'am? Respect and honour you, because your husband has acquired me! He can work me till I drop and flog me till I bleed, but my feelings are my own, so for God's sake, let me be! Tell him I'll wait. Where could I run to? I provoked you. I won't speak of it. Please believe that. Nothing, sir. No sign of the cattle. We went a mile across river, sir. Wild country. Very well, Mr. Merritt. Put the man back to work. Wretched blacks. Stealing even more of our herd. From now on, any native seen on my land will be pursued and, if necessary, killed. Is there not some more civilized way, Stephen? <laughs> civilized? If they need food, could we not give it to them? Teach them to farm, even employ them. <laughs> my dear Connor, your imagination is limitless. Shouldn't you rest? I have rested, Stephen. I do little else but rest. I've had a letter from Master Patrick, from the Cape. He wishes to be remembered to you. Thank you, sir. That's kind of him. I thought you'd like to know. I've seen you for a long time. I got wife now. Wife? Look, look. I got five cows. Good, eh? Wife good. But so is five cows good. I I took from Mannion's place. Soon I get more, then I get wife. One night, I see Mama, too. Don't come round again. What? You heard. Keep moving. Come on, put your backs into it. Don't stand about. The sun will be down before you know it. Get into it. Oh, that, that should be 20 gallons of cognac brandy, Mr. Harvey. That's 16 shillings a gallon.
Your limes, my dear. I find it distasteful and sour, Stephen. Dr. Wentworth has prescribed it as beneficial for the child. Dr. Wentworth does not have to drink it. <laughs> Every day I feel less like a woman and more like a broodmare. That, if I may say so, is hardly ladylike. Oh, for heaven's sake. Good night, Connor. Don't come round no more, she says. Why? Use your brains, boy. Him? He wouldn't. What about the mistress? I think it's two planks you are sometimes. Bloody Ellen. If she's been pulling... If the... she has, you shut your mouth and mind your place. Ride straight to Parramatta and inform the magistrates. Yes, sir. Explain that I was making rounds because of the cattle thefts and found the body after hearing a disturbance near the housekeeper's cottage. I want the military to mount patrols. Shocking occurrence, ma'am. Shocking. 
Can I get you anything? No, oh, thank you, Mrs. Blake. Ellen. I dare say you had a little sleep last night. I'll be all right, Mum. Terrifying experience. So fortunate you screamed and the master heard. Uh... Yes. Them natives. Right idea. Wrong fella. Next time I'm in Rose Hill, Mr. Evans, I'll look around for a new overseer. A bet, a boy or a girl? I don't know. Well, it's got to be one or the other. Stupid. Who cares? It's another bloody manion. I haven't heard her scream yet. I bet she does. Shut up! All of you. All over? Yes, sir. Well, Mrs. Mannion. Well enough. The baby was born dead. I can't tell you how deeply sorry I am. If only I'd taken you to Sydney, perhaps. But though he's a good man, Wentworth. At least you're young, there'll be others. In time. You get some sleep, my dear. I'll look in later. Several letters for you, ma'am. And the muslin you ordered will arrive next week. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Mr. Simeon Lord begged me to tell you that he has a new supply of very elegant shawls. And he looks forward to a visit from you soon. Thank you. 
Now, one, I believe, is from Patrick. Though his, uh, his writing is much improved. Oh, I believe it is. While I was in town, I, uh, I took the, the liberty. It's, it's nothing much. I, I do hope you're not offended. My tutor is quite old and very strict, and not at all like Mark, who I miss a lot. England is so green now the winter has gone, and the daffodils are all over Hyde Park. There is much interest in the rows between Mr. Pitt and Mr. Fox, and their supporters are wearing different coloured waistcoats. I expect by now the baby is born, and I have a sister, although I would quite like a brother, which is a way of saying I do not really mind which it is. Hurry it along there now. Come on, move it, boy -o. That's not heavy now. Move it in. Rago, keep the line moving. What do you mean? Sad. Sad. That's all I said. She looks sad. You're getting soft, Matthew. With all your talk of tyrants. It's such a pretty face. You'd rather have than your freedom. <laughs> You're a foolish man, Lendo. And hand them in! And less chat from you, you bog Irish orator! Move it in now! Don't think I'm a fool, boy -o. I know you spout rebellion every chance you get. Just a minute, Mr. Finn. Clothes need a wash. Let's look at you. Let's look at you. Oh. What's this then? It's mine. Get it back. <laughs> <laughs> You, put him in the punishment cell. We'll see what the master thinks of this. He's confined, of course. Shackles, sir. It came at me, you see, sir, like a wild dog. All right, Evans, you can go. Poison. Stephen. Connor, I must attend to this matter. You'll pardon me. The matter of Finn? I regret you were a witness to such an affair. But I assure you, I am capable of dealing with it. We need discuss it no further. Stephen! Later, my dear. I will not have him flogged. Oblige me, madam, and confine yourself to your own duties. I have no duties. And I will not permit this unfortunate man to suffer. Permit? You will not permit? Are you totally ignorant? Totally unable to conduct yourself as a gentlewoman? 
Has your loss made you lose your senses? This unfortunate man, as you are pleased to call him, is an agitator. And he will suffer, I give you my word, not only for striking my overseer, but for attempting to spread pernicious, inflammatory, and revolutionary doctrines among my laborers. Stephen, please. I beg you. I plead with you, don't act in haste. And isn't it unlawful to administer punishment without the magistrate's order? It is a matter of necessity. I'm writing to Mr. Marsden to tell him so. Oh, Stephen. You're clearly not well, Connor. I suggest you retire to your room. Who fears to speak of 98? Who blushes at the name? When cowards mock the patriot's fate? Whose head he hangs for shame? He's all a knave or half a slave who slights his country thus. One hundred, Mr. Evans. One hundred, Mr. Evans. his dark with <coughs> us. True man, that you... You may begin. Man ...who fill his glass with <coughs> us. <coughs> <coughs> Round the globe. That was his crime. Salve on the back, Mr. Evans. Solitary for a month. I think we'll have no more trouble. I'm sorry. For being upset? There seems no end to misery and cruelty and punishment. And yet people in high situations daily flout the law. They oppose the governor, they deal in illicit goods, but they seem to be respectable. Even wealthy and esteemed. It's another riddle, Mr. Harvey, and I fear I'm not very good at riddles. I wish I could help you. Shall I destroy this? No, I think we should preserve what little of it we can. I wish I could help. I wish I could speak of my admiration and... But it isn't possible. Dear Mr. Harvey, thank you. But it isn't possible. 